Good evening and welcome. Tonight, we will be going over the history and geography of Al Rayyan, Al Shahania, and Al Shamal in Qatar. If you're new to my channel, first of all, welcome. Second of all, I'm doing a series on my channel where I'm going to every single little corner of the globe in alphabetical order. So all of these places in Qatar are back to back to back out of every other place in the world. So I'm just going to cover them all in one video because uh, it being Qatar, Qatar's history is very interesting but very short compared to many other countries around the world. Um, very interesting histories, but very distinct, I think. So, let's start off talking about Al Rayyan, which as you can see, the city of Al Rayyan is a suburb of the capital city Doha. It's just outside, and it comprises all of this area over here. I try to pencil in as best I can without ruining my little map. Al Shahania is all of this space up here. Al Shamal is the very northern tip of the Qatari Peninsula. Now, they all kind of have something distinct about them. Al Rayyan is much more um, busy, it being a suburb of Doha. Al Shahania is much more of the like suburb of the suburb very famous for one thing in particular, which we're going to talk about. And then this tip here of Al-Shamal is very different from the rest of Qatar in that it's not developed, at least yet, right? Um, Qatar has had a huge economic boom since discovering oil in the 1970s. They've been building up, building up, building up the infrastructure, industry, housing, luxury, shopping, sports is a big one. Um, building up everything in Qatar to the absolute most modern standards, but it has not reached to the north yet. So up here is just pretty much sand and beach. There's not much up there. Um, a couple of really important historical things in this region first before we go play in Qatar on Google Earth, which is always very fun. The region that is now part of Al Rayyan, which has changed. Al Shahani is actually new. It used to be part of Al Rayyan. Um, there was a very famous battle that happened in the region here at the Al Wajba Fort, which hopefully I'll remember to show you on Google. The Al Wajba Fort battle, I guess the Battle of Al Wajba, um, was in 1893 against the Ottomans. The Ottomans had control of Qatar at this point, and as you can imagine, if you know your history, the Ottomans were Ottomaning. They were doing what the Ottomans did best at this time, which was overtaxing everyone, um, adding like way too much um, of everything against these people, um, subjugating them as much as possible. So the Qatari people have a history of fighting back against um, really powerful powers against them. So they did add Al Wajba and they were actually victorious. It didn't really matter much in the grand scheme of things because the Ottomans just cracked down twice as hard on the people here. But it is a very important moment in Qatari history because it was the battle that they won against one of the most powerful empires in the world, right? It's a big point of pride for the native Qatari peoples important moment in their history. Like I said, it didn't really change much in the grand scheme of things, but it, it was a, a W for the Qatar, so it still goes down in history as having that. Um, even older up in Al Shamal is a very interesting site right about here along the coast. 
um, where there was the ancient town of Zubara. Zubara was a very thriving pearling industry and uh, was very, very successful. The people of Bahrain, you can see the island here of Bahrain, um, really wanted to control this area. The people of Kuwait, which you can just see in the southernmost point of Kuwait here, uh, really wanted control of this region. So there's lots and lots and lots of fighting here. The um, Al Khalifas, um, I think, were in charge the longest up here, but it got to the point where fighting was so extreme that the city slowly emptied to the point that it was abandoned by, I want to say, the early to mid 1800s. And this being a desert region, the sand overtook it. And um, there's a big archaeology dig here. Um, a big fort was built in its glory days in like the, the 18th century. Um, and it's now a museum. And it is actually Qatar's only UNESCO World Heritage Site. So let me grab tablet you know I'll take any opportunity to show you guys some UNESCO sites to show you all about Al Zubara archaeological site. Okay, let's go like that. And we'll look at the pictures after you read this. Let's see. The walled coastal town of Al Zubara in the Persian Gulf flourished as a pearling and trading center in the late 18th century and early 19th centuries before it was destroyed in 1811 that's when it was and abandoned in the early 1900s founded by merchants from kuwait al zubara had trading links across the indian ocean arabia and western asia a layer of sand blown from the desert has protected the remains of the site's palaces mosques streets courtyard houses and fishermen's huts, its harbor and double defensive walls, a canal, walls, and cemeteries. Excavation has only taken place over a small part of the site, which offers an outstanding testimony to an urban trading and pearl diving tradition, which sustained the region's major coastal towns and led to the development of small independent states that flourished outside the control of the Ottoman, European, and Persian empires, and eventually led to the emergence of modern-day Gulf states. There's a picture here of beautiful Zubara Fort. Let's look at the gallery here. And you can really see some excavated things there, pictures from above. We're definitely going to look at it on Google Earth, so don't worry. But, um, it's very Pompeii looking, very abandoned city, very, very cool, some of those outer walls, very neat, I think. Let me move this out of the way. Um, actually, let's get into Google Earth, why not? Let me put this back and show you some Google Earth stuff. So I have highlighted here, Arayan, just the city. Let's take a look at some of the things you can see here. Lots of sports, as you can imagine, just being right outside Doha. There's a pretty mosque there in the courtyard. There's lots of cool museums here as well. Um, really neat shopping center that I think it's called the Bellagio, which is really funny because it looks straight up like the Bellagio in Las Vegas, where there's this indoor shopping area. And it feels like you're in Italy. There's a sky and everything. Very cool. Um, oh, that looks a little rough. But it's just pretty much your typical suburb of a very major city, right? Well, that's pretty. Little lily pads. Um, and here you can see there's Doha proper. So it's just on the outskirts. This here is a big old lagoon. It's actually a natural lagoon, um, but it was used as like a sewage dumping site for a long, long time, so you can imagine it got pretty nasty 
So the Qatari government is trying to get it all cleaned up and redone to make it a cool little inland wetland area. I don't think it's 100% done, but um, it's getting there. We need to find the fort. Um, I might just type it in. It was the... Uh, all my L's are going to pop up. <laughs> uh, washbo. I'll wash. Oops. Spoilers for what's coming up. I'll wash ba fort. It's okay. Let's find the town and then we're gonna find the fort together. I would have been way off, my goodness. I'll wash ba. It doesn't look very fort like. It looks like a like a, a big hospital compound or something. We're gonna find this fort. Uh -huh. That's that's a track. That's a big turnpike. Okay, maybe not. That's just a little marker. All right. I I want to say maybe it's not standing, but I don't think that's possible. I don't know. Maybe it was just in this area here? Some... I don't know. I feel like I looked it up before, but I guess not. So, you can imagine. I imagine it just looks like every fort. Maybe it's here in the slideshow. Let's see. That's pretty. Oh, that looks really nice. There's a pool being built. like salt washing in. Yeah, I guess not. Oh, that's a beautiful picture. All right. Let's move on. We have not talked about Al Shahani. And that's because its history just is kind of part of mostly Ariane's. It's just been kind of a desert, but there is one thing that Al Shahani is famous for. Here is Al Shahani. You can see it from above. Look at this. These are the big camel race tracks. Camel races. Let's take a look at these camels. I love a good camel. They're so sweet looking. So, there they go. I want to find a good picture. Ooh, nice. They're all lining up, getting a drink. Oh, they're so cute. Alright, maybe it's not this slideshow. Ooh, they're they're out on the track there. I think it's this slideshow I want to show you. Yeah. So this is a camel out on the run. And as you can see, it does not have a jockey. And that's because in Qatar they have little robots that sit on the camels to um, take the weight off of them. And then Along the sides of the racetrack are these roads, and they control the robots from these cars. If you take a look out here, you can see, like, the streets, you know, along the track where the camels run. So I imagine that these little robots maybe, like, vibrate or something, make a little buzz buzz so the camels know to, like, speed up, go faster, whatever. But, um, look at all of them all lined up. <laughs> um, yeah, that is how they race camels in Qatar. Look at this camel crossing here. <laughs> Very patriotic camel. It looks like the winner circle here. There's the robots. I like how they look like very tiny people. <laughs> it's very clever. And I'm sure the camels appreciate not having someone thumping along their back because camels are very bumpy when they run. I wonder if that's the winner's... I have to say winner's circle. Looks like a winner's square. What is this? Oh, it's a helipad. <laughs> Definitely don't want to get awards there. That's where the, the camel's flying on their helicopters. But that is pretty much what this area is famous for, are these camel tracks here. You can race your camel. Now let's head up to the north of the peninsula so that we can see this archaeological site. I 
gets up over here. Al Zubara. So here you can see from above, this was the town. And like I said, very Pompeii looking, isn't it? All the little outlines of what used to be buildings and, you know, people's homes, their mosques, their marketplaces, their places of business. You can see all the little outlines here and you can see how much more has to be excavated. This was a huge, huge town, wasn't it? Very cool. Zubara Town Ruins. Let's take a closer look. It's almost kind of haunting in a way. There's the fort. We're going to take a look at that next. And yeah, all that's left of a very major city. It looks like someone put some art out there. All that's left of a major, major coastal city. This guy's making some little dows, looks like. Some artifacts found there. Some old pottery. It's all in the museum inside the fort. Ooh, looks like a little bird's made a nest in there. So yeah, really kind of eerie in a way, but also really mysterious in a fun way, you know, that there's still so much more to learn about this place. The fort is located over here. There's the fort. Let's take a look at what's inside. Neat view from above. Old cannon. Sweet camel. And yeah, the interior is all a museum of um, what life was like here, artifacts that have been found, some cool artworks depicting life here. Um, looks like some old oyster shells here from Pearling. And yeah. You need, I think, <laughs> some little pigeons in love out there. So, I think that was all the things I wanted to show you. We could play around and look at all the little beaches up here, but these aren't like the tourist beaches, right? These are just sand and water. Nothing too glamorous, right? Head down to Doha if you want to see some glamorous Qatari beaches. Not so much up here. It is just nothing, which is really eerie when you think about Qatar, because when you think about Qatar, you think the skyscrapers, you think the World Cup, all the glitz and glamour. There are still some parts. There's a Shamal Beach up here. Where'd it go? Shamal Beach. There are still some parts of the country that are still just barren desert. Yep. It's still fun, though. Nothing wrong with just desert. It's still very beautiful in its own way. Looks like they've made this little town a little garden paradise, which is nice. I'm sure in about 20 years time... Ooh, they got their, their falcons out. In 20 years time, this, this will be skyscrapers, right? This will be luxury resorts and all of that. But for now, it is still just desert, which is still really cool. So that is going to be it for tonight. I think that's all I wanted to show you guys. So um, thank you so much for watching. And again, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing so you can see all the places we're going to. Next, we're going to head up to Syria. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good... Good, 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 good.